Attorney Austin Adams Schoenfeld, LLP, focusing on business law and commercial litigation, is proud to support Rob on the Road, Region Rising. More information available at murphyaustin.com. Coming up on Rob at Home, an international rugby star is one of Sacramento's newest firefighters, the journey of Lou Stanfill, from his battle with cancer to his commitment to the community. What matters most to Lou Stanfill? Coming up next on Rob at Home. And now, Rob on the Road, exploring Northern California. Welcome to Rob at Home. I am so glad to have you with us and so glad to bring you today's guest, someone I've long admired and you're about to see why. Joining us is Lou Stanfill from his home in Sacramento. Lou is one of the newest firefighters with the Sacramento Fire Department, as well as an international rugby champ. Lou, great to see you. Yeah, likewise, Rob. Thanks for having me on. Great to be with you. I first met you, gosh, maybe seven or eight years ago um, when you were playing rugby. And you have three, is this correct? You were involved in, majorly involved with three World Cups? Yeah, that, that's correct, Rob. So uh, I started playing on the national team in 2005. I, had, uh, I was just before my 20th birthday. And uh, I continued to do that through my formative years. So um, up until 2015, which landed the 07 World Cup in France. 2011, which was in New Zealand, and 2015, which was in England. And um, uh, they're pretty big milestones for a lot of rugby players. Uh, and being mostly amateur as an American, you know, the reason you do it is because you love the game and you want to represent your country. But to get to that big stage is a, is a great honor. It's huge. It's huge. In fact, you were named a national rugby legend by the Rugby Association. That's big time. Yeah, well, you know. The people come up with that. I just, uh, you know, just show up, play the game, and try and be as good of a person to everyone you meet, and uh, you let the rest take care of itself. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today, what you just said, the mentality that you applied to rugby, which took you to the top, and it is the same mentality that you have applied to life, especially when life gets broken. Um, you've been through a pretty big battle um, and it started in November of last year. Tell us about this. So uh, I have been trying to become a firefighter for uh, about a year and a half and I got real close and uh, nothing really panned out. You know, so I was a little bit down on myself. Um, my wife was asking me questions about, well, what's the next step? Just because the process of becoming a firefighter uh, isn't very complex, but it can become arduous and pretty long. Um, and during all this, uh, I had had a biopsy done on a lump I had on my neck. On Friday the 13th in November, uh, I get the call from the doc and he tells me uh, it was lymphoma. And the diagnosis really rocked our world. And then once things settled down, we found out more about the disease it became clear that this is going to be a battle, but this is going to be a battle that I was going to win. And um, about oh, 10 days afterwards is when I got the call from Sac City saying that, hey, some people dropped out of the um, uh, of the academy and you were next in line. Do you want a spot? And it took me a moment just because of, the, of all the things I knew I was going to have to deal with. But I ultimately, I knew like I can do this. And so I did it. I had uh, I had just finished up chemo the day before the academy started. And then during oh. academy, I was going through radiation. So there were some challenges there. But, um, you know, the reason why we're given challenges is to overcome them. And uh, overcome them, I did. And it's astounding to me that you went through all of that radiation in the middle of training for the firefighter, to be, to be a firefighter in Sacramento, which is huge. You come from a family of service, your mom with the CHP, your dad a Sacramento County deputy. Is that correct? That's correct. It's awesome. So mm -hmm. you're continuing the legacy of public service. Is this something that, that you always wanted to do? And why firefighter? I was real fortunate. I got that call back because now that I'm a firefighter, this, I, this is the best job in the world. I'm, I, I am proud of a lot of the accomplishments that I've, I've done in life, the things I've done. Um, Outside of marrying my wife and, and being the father of two beautiful children, uh, this is the best thing 
I have done and uh, the best decision I could have made. And the, the, like I said, the best job on earth. Like I, I never come home feeling ragged from not sleeping. I feel energized from the fact that I got paid to help the community out and ride in an ambulance and drive on an engine and put out fires and help people when they have medical calls. And it's, um, uh, every day is exciting and new. And I, I, I love it. I love every second of it. Like I said, I, 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 I'm excited every moment I'm at work because I'm learning and I'm helping and, uh, I'm working with a lot of people who are like-minded and, um, uh, who really love working within a team setting. And that's, that's what I know and love. Yeah. Team player. I, I really feel the theme team player over and over again in your life. Um, from high school at Jesuit, where you were a standout already in your field of, of rugby. Um, and then you went on, you know, to the World Cup, great career in rugby. And now you are a Sacramento firefighter. And you really mean that Sacramento firefighting is better than the World Cup. Uh, you know, I love sport. And sports giving me so much and it's taught me so much. And now that I'm in that situation, I, I feel like there's more to be expected of me and there's more that I can give. Um, even though, you know, on the rugby field, I, I would give everything I had. I would have to be dragged off that field at the end. I would make sure that there was nothing left in the tank and that I gave everything I had, not just for myself, and my own pride and ego, but more so for the person next to me to make sure I didn't let them down. And now I'm in a situation where, you know, something's on fire. You, you got to you gotta run into that building and you got to search it. And you have to make sure you can extract someone that's a victim or if a firefighter goes down, you're going to be asked to go in there and save them however, however they need saving. And uh, I feel like being a part of something like that, it, it fills my soul. That sense of duty and devotion to duty is, is something that really enriches me and and gives me more purpose than I thought that I could have had. And now that I'm a father, you know, you exponentiate that and you have a lot more to work for and you have a lot more to train for and you have a lot more to give because of the things that you have to lose. Mm, that's huge. You know, I think about, you just mentioned of running into a burning building and I wonder which to you is scarier, running into a fire or running into a battle for cancer? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I guess they're both kind of the same. You know, I guess one is a little scarier because of the intensity of it all and the short term that uh, of, of the dangers you're facing. But the other one is you step back and you gain a lot of perspective and you look around and you try and make the best decisions because you're in it for the long haul. If you're lucky, you know, some people don't have the, those abilities, you know, some people don't have that opportunity. They get cancer and they months to live. And granted that's, that is months to do something with your life as you fight and as you try to overcome. And a lot of people, many people I know they're given months to live and they out, they stretch that out to years and they fight and they make changes in their lives. And it might be scary every step of the way, but the fear is only something that you live with when you let it get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. Knowing it's there and acknowledging it's one thing, but giving into it is another. And um, <clears throat> both are very scary, but both are opportunities for you to be a better person, to perform and to help someone else. And I think that um, that's, for me, that's my purpose in life is to help other people, to help other people be better, whether it's you know working out with them, uh, or to actually physically help them. Um, and, you know, in terms of whether they're physically ill or they have an injury and you're responding to it. Um, but all of these are only made effective when you do it out of compassion and kindness, because I think that's what everyone deserves. And I think there's always a situation where you need to be tough on people, but people you don't know, you know, people that you want to get better, if you're a compassionate human being and they know that you care about them, then that's the most effective way to lead them and to help them. That's beautiful. I, I also want to say that 
you know, you're a big, you're a big man. You're like six, four, you walk into a room and you're one of those people that everybody sees. And I feel it's not because of your height or stature or appearance, but it's because of the light that is inside of you. Uh, I feel that your heart is as big as your height. And anyone I asked about doing this interview with you said the same thing, that uh, you are one of the most remarkable people they've met. And you also caught the attention of someone when your cancer diagnosis got out that wanted to cheer you on along the way as you have done for others. And that's former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hey Lou, I just found out uh, that you have cancer. Don't get discouraged. Remember positive attitude is the most important thing. There's a lot of people that have licked this uh, illness, this problem, nothing you can do to do your health. I mean, you're in your early 30s. What are we talking about here? So you crush it, okay? Pow! Get it out. What do you think about that? You must still, do you still watch that all the time or what? I watch it less now than I used to, but every time I watch it, it does this to me. It gives me the biggest smile on my face. <laughs> and for two reasons. One, because his message is timeless, right? The most important thing in life in any circumstance, whether it's adversity or it is uh, in, in times of prosperity is to keep a positive mental attitude. That will help you get through so much in life. And that doesn't mean that you ignore things that are bad, but rather you embrace the challenge of the things in order to either contribute to them, to change them, or to help make them just slightly better to deal with. You know, when your boss says that he needs so, many, so much amount of paperwork done to do a medial task, I'm sure no one is, embraces that. But if you keep a positive mental attitude, you say, hey, we're going to do it, and we're going to do it the best we can because the boss expects it, well, that's going to improve your relationship with your boss, and now they trust you more. Now you're given more responsibility, and uh, you're put in more of a leadership position maybe. Uh, but these aren't one-off things. It's, it's a consistent and constant um, a state of mind to be in. And it's hard. Being a positive, and you know, it, it, sometimes it takes a lot out of people but it's incredibly vital. And then the other part that, that I love so much is when he tells me you have to crush it. And so it, those are two things that, um, yeah, I watch it from time to time. When I was going through my treatment, I watched it every day because it always put a smile on my face and it always made me happy. And it always reminded me that that, that positive mental attitude is important. And then that last, um, that last uh, quote that he gave me always got me fired up. And uh, so I love it. I love every second of it. And uh, it was really nice of him to do. And the you know, Arnold was always a, um, a role model growing up. If I ever get the chance to meet Arnold, that would be, um, that would be a phenomenal day. And I hope I get that day because uh, uh, you would see a bigger smile than this. I, I hope that happens. I feel sure. I feel sure it will. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you also, you know, I, you clearly have had a lot of inspiration, uh, I would imagine, poured into you. Or is that just the way you are? Where did you get your outlook on life? And how do you keep that as in shape as you do physically? Is it something that you have to practice and do a lot daily with inspirational thinking with yourself? You know, inspiration is, is an interesting word because everyone wants inspiration and everyone in some way deserves inspiration. But inspiration is an external force, right? You receive inspiration from something else. Discipline is the more controllable aspect to doing the things that need to get done. And in my adult life, um, by reading a lot of, I uh, don't know if you know, podcaster, author, uh, former Navy SEAL commander, Jocko Willink. He's put out a, a, a whole barrage of books about um, taking control. They're, they're, in, in a lot of ways, they're self-help books, but they're, they're, they're books on leadership and how to be a better leader. But for me, that's one and the same. To be a better leader means to be a better person. And he, you know, one of his quotes is discipline equals freedom. 
if you're a disciplined enough person to, to, to do the things that you need to get done, you will have the freedom to do whatever you want to do. And no one will take that away from you. One of the best lessons I ever learned in life, um, being a young person, you know, you want to fit in, you want to be different. And we all go through those trials and tribulations. And, you know, my, my father, who was um, law enforcement, and my dad was, he wasn't stern by any stretch. And he allowed me a lot of freedom. And he taught me the value of hard work and the value of earning a dollar. And he taught me many great things as well as my mother. But my, my dad, one thing, one time um, when I was trying to ask him if I could do something, maybe it was like bleach my hair because everyone else was doing it. And I wanted to be cool. And my dad stopped me and said, son, I understand that you want to be different. But if you want to be different, and at this point, he pokes me right in the chest. He says, be different here. Wow. And um, that stuck with me. Wow. And I think about that all the time. Anytime. You know, and I, I got older. I was like, damn, I think I'll get a tattoo. He was like, all right, well, listen, you do what you want, but remember what I told you. And I'd be like, okay, well, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a year and a half. And that's what I said. I'd wait my, in 18 months, if I still want that tattoo, maybe I'll get it. And then 18 months go by and you forget that you ever wanted a tattoo. And so it's little things like that, you know, like how can I be a better person or how could I be different? You can be different by the way that you hold yourself, by the things that you do right? The things that you say. Um, but action speaks louder than words. And one thing in my adult life that I realized is when you judge others, or rather when you try and get a better picture of others, you don't do so on their mistakes, but rather on how they recover from those mistakes. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I would want people to know from me, because I'm not a perfect person. I mess up all the time. And you can ask my wife and she will back that up. But how I want to be known is how do I recover from those mistakes? What do I do in order to show that I take ownership of what I've done wrong? And this is what I'm going to do to correct it. And then I'm going to do this. And I will remember this moving forward so that I don't ever make that mistake again. And again, that all comes back to discipline. Inspiration is great. And we should all in embrace inspiration when it comes. But discipline is, um, it can be unwavering when you make it so. And that is where I have put myself because these are the things that are important to me. And if I'm disciplined enough, then I will keep them important and I will not give in to what is easy. Golly, look, what you just said, Lou, is the reason that I do this, what we do. Because those nuggets of gold that you just shared from your life, I truly believe are things that can go to someone else and help radically impact their life. What made you listen to your dad? when he said that about the heart, because I didn't know your father had said that, but when I described you back to yourself, that's how I described you. When you walk in the room, you don't see Big Lou Stanfield, you see your big heart. Um, I admired my dad and I admired both my parents and both of them were hardworking. They were good people, they were kind. Um, and I wanted to be very much like them. And in a way that, you know, a young person always sees their parents. I mean, when your parents do all the right things in front of you, you embrace that and you, and, and you want to be like them. And you see the people that they, that they hang out with and how they behave. And you realize like, this is, these are good people. And my dad never said anything to me in my adolescent years that ever led me astray. And when he said that, and I've always believed that, you know, a heart, I went to Catholic school. And so, you know, do unto others as you would like done to you and all the teachings that they teach in the Bible from Jesus Christ that, are, that promote brotherhood and being kind and being compassionate and giving to others who have less to you than you. You know, uh, these things have, have always been um, indoctrinated in me from a young age. And I think that it always comes from the heart, you know, because if you do it for any other reason, then it, uh, it's, it's, um, it's a mirage, you know, you're just putting on a show, but if you do it because you don't, and you do it and you don't expect thanks or you don't expect anyone to acknowledge it, you do it because it's the right thing. Then, then you're doing that. You are, that's what you're doing. You're doing the right thing. And when you can say like, what's the next decision I got to make? Well, whatever it is, I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm going to do the next right thing. Um, you know, and it, it can really help you in life and not just, you know, to help you be successful in whatever it is you're trying to do, but 
to give you confidence and to provide that self-esteem, that substance of character that, that no matter where you go, you will be a, a value add. You will be an asset because you operate out of what is right, not out of what is perceived to be right or what is correct for whatever agenda you're going off of. What must be shared from Lou Stanfield? I think what must be shared is that we all need a purpose in life. And sometimes that purpose is hard to find. Sometimes we struggle with it. And struggle is not a bad thing. Struggle is opportunity. Struggle is, it's natural. But we can always change. We can always do something in order to improve our situation. And that positive mental attitude and that, that drive to be better, being disciplined, all of these things, they're all good. They're all good. And if we find our purpose and our passion, and even if sometimes it might not be our purpose, but as long as we put our, our head to something and I'm going to work hard towards this. I know I have to work hard in school because if I work hard in school, I can do whatever I want to do. I, for me, it was athletics, right? Or I, I don't like athletics. I like theater. Good. Or I like music. Good. Or you know what? I'm not interested in any of those things. You know what I want to do? I want to go work to make money so that I can be entrepreneurial, so I can be freedom to make. All these things are good, but we have to find purpose. To, to sit back in life and to let life happen around us is the greatest waste. You know, I, uh, there was a saying that I always love. I said, to give anything less than your best is a sacrifice to the gift. Whatever gift you have. And the gift that I was given, I was given many. I was, I was set up for success because I had parents that loved me. I had never, I always knew where my meals were coming from. I never thought that I wouldn't get fed. I had a roof over my, I had everything, you know, both my parents blue collar, didn't grow up with a lot of money, had a really small house, but I was given everything I could need in order to succeed and to lose it was up for me. And if I made the next best decision, if I had my passion and I made the right decisions, and trust me, I made a lot of wrong decisions. I messed up. I got in trouble. I, I went and did things that were against the, the ethos and the credo that I, I, I put myself forward in life. I was mean to people or I didn't treat them the way they ought to be treated or I gave in to peer pressure. I did, I, I did all of these things. But again, how you recover and how you address and how you move forward and do the next best thing, it's a constant journey. And, and that's for everything, you know, with all the issues that we see on the media, with politics, with local government, whatever it is, you want to be different, be different here, make the next best decision, do your job to the best of your ability and be the leader that you would want to be led by. I love that. I have to ask you this because I know that there's someone watching this who will be newly diagnosed with cancer, what would you say to them? Keep a positive mental attitude. Fight each day as the day. In EVOC training, when we do drive cars across the skid pan, you know, one of the biggest lessons is to keep a high horizon, mm. right? And a high horizon is good because it gives you, it gives you big picture. But sometimes with our goals, especially with something as daunting as cancer, each day, just get each day done and do the right things for you. Make the good decisions. Eat well. Get plenty of fluids. Get the rest you need. But also keep yourself in a position where if you feel like, hey, I can get up and I can go walk today, go walk. If you feel like I can work out today, work out. And then reassess. Learn from the lessons. Did I go too hard? Did I not do enough? Did I eat something I shouldn't? And if you feel like, you know, lots of studies out there about what you can eat and what you shouldn't eat and whatever you feel is best, do what's best. But do it each day and reassess in terms of what can be done better the next day. And if you do that, no matter what the outcome is, you'll treat people better. You'll treat yourself better. And above all else, you'll leave a legacy. And the legacy I feel in that position, whether you overcome the cancer and you get to continue on, or if your battle is hard fought, but shortened, you'll leave something behind that you'll be proud of and other people will be proud of you. And just know you're never alone. 
That is tremendous. And I will also add to that, if you're facing this situation, look at Lou. Look to Lou. You had a daunting diagnosis not long ago, but today you have a brilliantly bright future. And I'm so proud of you, Lou. And I'm so honored to have you here on Rob at Home. You are truly a hero to me and to so many others. And I thank you for joining us. The honor is all mine, Rob. Thank you for having me on. And thank you to everyone out there who are, who's in public service, um, uh, the people who are keeping our streets safe, um, keeping our public safe, those who are off fighting foreign wars in order to keep freedom safe. And um, thank you for all who do the next best thing day in and day out. And thank you for rushing in to places that people rush away from. And that is a fire. All right. Thank you so much. Lou Stanfield, rugby champ, cancer survivor, and firefighter in Sacramento. <laughs> we'll see you next time right here on Rob on the Road. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Rob. Austin Adams Schoenfeld LLP, focusing on business law and commercial litigation, is proud to support Rob on the Road, Region Rising. More information available at murphyaustin.com.